Notebooking, I feel, is very simplistic once you kind of get the confidence to do it. But I'm hoping today to just share some tips and things that I do to use notebooking in our day so that you feel confident enough to go and try it in your day. If you have any questions when the video is over, just leave those down in the comments below and I will just chit chat with you guys down there. So let's get started. You can use notebooking in a lot of different ways, okay? I use it mostly with spiral notebooks. You can do a single subject notebook, three subject, five subject. You could do it with composition notebooks. You could do it with binders. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you, and that's kind of the beauty of notebooking, is you can make it how you want it. You could even do a bullet journal approach to notebooking. Notebooking, I feel, is very simplistic once you kind of get the confidence to do it. I feel like that's what holds people back, is they think they don't understand it, but it really is very simple. You just have to kind of step out on the edge and trust yourself enough to do so. If you are brand new to homeschooling and you don't feel super, super confident yet, I would suggest maybe starting with unit studies because notebooking is really just kind of like a unit study unlocked, if that makes sense. So unit studies, you know, use books, <clears throat> any kind of book. Let's grab a book. Wrinkle in time. Go online, find a unit study for it. It'll give you vocab words, science things, history things, um, language arts things. There's all kinds of assignments for this book. And unit studies are great. We use them a lot. Um, but I feel like sometimes when you're trying to homeschool a bunch of kids at once or maybe your child struggles in one subject but excels in the other, I feel like unit studies don't always work for that. I feel like we need to kind of break that box open and make it really fit for us, for our children, for our family, and for our homeschooling style. So I feel like the best way to do that is to use notebooking. What is notebooking? Notebooking is where you take a book <clears throat> and you and your child pick what you wanna learn about in that book, which is another advantage over unit studies. Unit studies tell you exactly what to learn. When you do it, when you do notebooking, you get to pick what you wanna learn about. So. For example, we just did notebooking over James and the Giant Peach. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen all about it. I will leave a link for my Instagram in the description box below in case you want to follow us along on there. But anyway, we just did notebooking using James and the Giant Peach. Now, I had never read James and the Giant Peach before, so I wasn't really sure how it was going to go down. Again, if you were new to this, I would really recommend studying up on the book beforehand I've been notebooking for a while now, so I felt pretty okay with just grabbing the book, starting with my kids, and going from there. So what we would do is we would read the chapters that I decided to read that day as I, my cat, right? Famous ginger cat here. Um, she's interrupting me. So I would pick the chapters we were going to read that day, and when I, while I'm reading, I would kind of mark the pages that I'm going to want to use later when it's time for school and by use I mean it might have a really good vocab word it might have something really interesting about history it might have something really interesting about science or it might have been a really good sentence to diagram I mean it can be as big of, of an idea or as small of an idea as you can think of so I would go through and kind of mark the little page you could put a paper clip you could put one of those little magnet clips <laughs> Oh, kitty. Um, she does this during school, too. You could just dog ear it. If it's yours and you don't mind, you can highlight it, underline it. You could keep a little notebook and write it beside. Now, one of the advantages of researching beforehand is you could maybe get some of those topics already written down. Go away, kitty, kitty. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes I just like to do things however I feel that day. So I just start reading and then we go from there. So... During, like I said, I will earmark it. So when I'm done reading those chapters, I will go back through to the pages I marked and I will decide what we want to start with. So maybe I'm going to start with vocab words. 
So I will write them down on my board. Here are words we read today. You're going to look them up and practice spelling them. However you choose to do that, you could do it just for vocab. You could do it just for spelling. It's up to you. Or you can have your kids. You can say, hey, what words really stuck out to you in this chapter that maybe you don't know what they mean, or maybe you found them really funny, or maybe you think they would be really a challenge to spell, just anything, and let them get involved in that. Because like I've said before, if they're interested and involved in it, they're gonna do better and care more about it as you go on. And then I will do the same thing. So James and the Giant Peach, of course, lots of insects. And it really, I had never read it. It has a lot of scientific facts in here that I did not know. So we would, of course, we took time to learn about all the different insects. We even took time, we learned all about peaches and how they're grown and different type of peaches and how they're you know, sent to the stores and all that stuff that might not just come up in your science book. There's just lots of little tiny things that are fun to learn about. And when you're reading about it in a fun and silly way, even though this is obviously a very made up story, um, it gets them all you know, silly and fun about it. And then it seems more fun to learn about the real stuff. So those are all the science topics you can cover. I mean, it goes on and on. Sharks were mentioned, this mentioned clouds, and any book you read, fiction or nonfiction, is going to mention so many things you can learn about. So we could we learned about weather and clouds and the peach and uh, sharks and all the different animals. And then it talks about, you know, they go from England to New York. And so you can talk about all the different continents and the ocean and where they would have to travel and you have geography, right? So then it talks about in here, the Queen Mary ship. We did a lot of documentaries on that. We wrote pages about it. So we know all about the Queen Mary ship I did not even know about before. I mean, I knew it was a ship, but I've learned lots of fun things about it. So as I say, I, when I went through it, blah, 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 if I can talk y'all, I get too excited and then I rush. <laughs> so I just mark those things as I go. So when we read about the Queen Mary, I, I dog-eared that page and I said, all right, we're gonna learn about this. So what I would do is we would turn the documentaries about it. You could go to the library and get books about it and I would have them Google about it. So then whatever they learned, they would have a fact sheet. They would write down facts about it. They would make up, they would either write a paper about it sometimes or sometimes I let them just write a creative story about it like the time I went on the Queen Mary or how I helped to build the Queen Mary or just whatever. Um, when, when I was a peach farmer or how I'm gonna build my peach farm you can see or the time I got shrunk and I was the size of a Ladybug and here's how the ladybugs live and here's what the ladybugs do so you can keep it very much Just factual or you can make it fun and creative. I like to do both I like to have them do some fact things and some creative things to keep it fun So we did this book it took us about a week and a half to read it because we were kind of busy Normally we can finish books in about a week but we had things going on and that was other than math this is what we did for school that covered everything you guys we had geography and spelling and vocab and history and science oh yes so and then we did our math separately and all of that is in these spiral notebooks i have one for each of my kids i have five kids if you don't know four of them do school school and one is three so they would just write it down in here let's see if i can show you they also, we do our morning basket. I have this sitting here in case I need to show you things from it. So this is actually a page just from our morning basket. And how we notebook for that is we will read our whole or whatever we're gonna do looping wise out of our morning basket. And I will say, pick one thing we read about in our morning basket that really stuck out to you that was your favorite and do something about that in your notebook. It can be, like I said, a paper on it. It could be a picture on it. It could be a creative story on it. I give them freedom in that because the morning basket is just fun. So they get to pick whichever they wanted to. If we just read about poems, they could maybe draw a silly picture about the poem, or maybe they want to write their own poem. If it was geography, maybe they're going to draw me a map or write me a story about travels they took. You get the picture. So some of the stuff in our notebooks, I don't keep a separate notebook for morning time writing things. I do keep one for morning time art things because we also have just an art time for our morning time and that goes in a separate binder because they're usually paintings and it's just fun. But their writings for morning time go in here. And then you can see they had, they wrote facts about their ladybug and earthworm. I don't know why she skipped. This is the beginning of her cloud story. We had half a day of school on Friday. We did not finish, so we'll finish this. She has vocab words written down. 
let's see, just all kinds of things. What can I show you? This was an imaginative picture from Storytime about space. She is practicing some more words from the book. Just all kinds of things. They practice writing some words just in cursive from the book. Oh, another one. We have ladybugs, and we learned about different layers of the dirt. This was from our morning basket. She decided to write about enchanted castles because we were learning about castles, and she got to make it fun. More vocab words here. So I'm not going to just sit and show you. <clears throat> This was when we were, she picked space one day from her morning basket. Um, everything here we're learning about seeds and how they grow. So I'm not going to stop and show you every single thing, but as you can see, some of it's really fun and artistic, and some of it is more just writing things down, like, you know, paragraphs about clouds. So it can be whatever. So like I said, if you're not used to notebooking and you're not real confident in how to do it I would start with unit studies because it notebooking is basically a unit study that you are making yourself it's giving you and your children the freedom to pick the topics out of the book that you want to learn about and to take the time to to learn about that those subjects because in unit studies it's going to have you keep going and keep going and maybe your kid was just fascinated by one thing in the book and so you want to expand and expand and expand on that and take as much time as you need there are times where we keep learning about things even after we're done with the book because they found that so fascinating and I want them to have the freedom to do that. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun because you get to pick and they get to, I don't know, I know I've said that a thousand times, but they get to pick and I just feel like that makes them so much more interested and they want to do it. I'm not saying this is what you're doing, this is what you're writing about, go. They get to really pick and how they want to write it and all those things. So it keeps it really fun. But I think that explains notebooking for the most part. Did I forget how to explain anything? I don't think so. If you want to start notebooking and you think you're confident, I would first take your kid, go to the library, pick out your first book, go to the dollar store, go to Walmart, go to Target, wherever you're going to go, get your notebook, some pencils, and some crayons, and just go get started. And you will figure it out. It might be a little bumpy at first, and you might think this is not enough at first, but just watch, give it time, get through at least a book or two, and realize how much of that stuff is really retained in your kid's brain and how much fun you just had together. And I encourage you as a mom to get your own notebook. I do. I should have brought out my notebook. I have so much fun. I'm a horrible artist, by the way, but I just have so much fun doing it with them. And it really, when you sit down and you do it with them, I don't know. It just, it brings them joy. Like I can tell they're really happy that mom thinks it's good enough to do too. And I think that makes a big difference in their attitude and their day. And then we can all, you know, pass around our pictures and laugh at how funny we made it or think, wow, you wrote something really good to each other. So it just keeps it fun. Now you could do notebooking just from your morning basket. You could do notebooking just from your library books. And like I said, you can do notebooking just from picking a curriculum book and maybe not the workbook and it works too. So if you want more information on how to do that just with curriculum books, like maybe Story of the World or Appalachia or whatever, then I'll be happy to talk about that. Just ask me the questions. But I'm going to stop here because I could go on all day about notebooking. I hope that helps you understand it a little bit better and feel a little bit more confident in it. Again, I have another video where I talk about that a little bit and I will link that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's very, very simple, but I promise you it is enough and I promise you it is fun and I promise you, you can do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure and like it if you did. I'm happy to talk with you guys in the comments below and please subscribe if you have not so that you can come back and you know, we can keep talking to each other. I hope you guys have a blessed day and a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.